For much of the season, Josh Giddy's name has been tied to off-court drama. There were allegations that he had a relationship with a minor, but after conducting a criminal investigation, police announced that Giddy would not face any charges. Even though he wasn't charged, the severity of this story has completely overshadowed Giddy's struggles on the court. Coming into the league, Giddy showed lots of promise being a 6A guard with elite passing skills. He was quite raw as a player, but with enough time, teams believed he could develop into one of the better point guards in the league. However, the Thunder are way ahead of schedule on their rebuild, and unfortunately for Giddy, he hasn't progressed at the same rate as his team. Now that the Thunder have high expectations, Giddy hasn't been awarded as much freedom, and his flaws have been exposed. While he's still young, I have major concerns about his game and whether he'll be able to have a long NBA career. In today's video, I'm going to be going over Josh Giddy's strengths and weaknesses and whether he'll be able to last in the NBA. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1000 subscribers by the end of the season and your support goes a long way. With all that being said, let's get into the video. As of now, Josh Giddy is only 21 years old playing his third season in the league. He was a former lottery pick, going 6th overall in the 2021 draft, and in just his second season, he averaged 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists per game. Since he's a former lottery pick that's put up good counting stats, Giddy will receive opportunities based solely on potential. The question though is whether his numbers have a real impact on winning. During his first two seasons, the Thunder weren't competing for anything of significance, so Giddy was given a longer leash allowing him to fill up the stat sheet. However, OKC is competing for the number one seed this year, and Giddy's minutes have conveniently dropped from 31 per game over his first two seasons to 25 a night this season. There are many games where he gets benched for long stretches, and there's one major reason for that. While Giddy has a unique skill set for his size, you have to cater to him quite a lot in order for him to be successful. A good comparison for Josh Giddy is a young Lonzo Ball. During Lonzo's first two years in the league, he struggled from the three-point line. On top of that, he didn't have a great handle or an ability to create his own shot. His basketball IQ was evident, but it's hard to be an effective playmaker when the defense doesn't view you as a scoring threat. For his career, Giddy has struggled as an outside shooter, and he's not skilled enough to break down the defense and take full advantage of his passing skills. The difference with Lonzo is that he was seen as a great shooter in college, whereas Giddy was seen as a poor shooter when he entered the draft. Even though he struggled during his first two years, Lonzo still shot a better three-point percentage than Giddy on higher volume. Once he received proper coaching, he was able to unlock a skill that he had previously shown. Additionally, Lonzo has been an impressive defender throughout his career, while Giddy hasn't been anything special on that end. While Lonzo's weaknesses were heavily magnified due to the enormous hype he received, if we're being honest, Giddy is quite similar to that version of Lonzo. Defenses have caught on to Giddy's weaknesses, and there are many times where they dare him to be a scorer. Teams will frequently throw double teams at Shea to leave Giddy open, and he doesn't make teams pay often enough. Another strategy opponents have used is putting their center on Giddy. Because his outside shot isn't respected, centers can sag off him and clog up driving lanes. This treatment gets in Giddy's head sometimes because he feels like he has to prove the defense wrong. There are moments where Giddy will be hesitant on the perimeter, but because the defense is daring him to make a play, he'll take the bait and force up a tough shot. On defense, Giddy can make plays because he has the instincts to go with his height and length. However, he's not a reliable on-ball defender because he's too slow to guard quicker players, and despite his size, he's not physical enough to match up with bigger, stronger players. The Thunder have great perimeter defenders in Lou Dort and Jalen Williams, and one of the best rim protectors in Chet Holmgren. OKC has a top defense because of those guys, not Josh Giddy. That being said, if Giddy is a flawed offensive player that doesn't make a huge impact defensively, what value does he provide? Well, as I've mentioned, Giddy does have excellent passing skills. When you combine that with his 6'8 height, Giddy is able to see over the top of the defense and set up his teammates. This is beneficial whenever OKC runs set plays, because he has all the tools to put the ball in the right place and ensure his team gets easy scores. The Thunder particularly like to use him as an inbounder on the sideline for this reason. Whatever play they draw up, they feel confident in Giddy's ability to make an on-time, on-target pass. 
As a scorer, Giddy is effective when he gets a full head of steam. He's good in handoff actions where he can make a straight line drive, or when he gets some momentum on cuts to the rim. By the same token, Giddy is tough to stop in the open court. At his size, he's able to finish well in transition when he's running hard towards the basket. On top of that, he makes precise passes on the fast break, so naturally his teammates run harder when he's pushing the ball. While these are good skills to have, they're also quite specific. It's nice that Giddy can execute a set play with an on-point pass, or make some nice defensive plays due to his height, but these things aren't what makes OKC great. The Thunder's offense isn't centered around Giddy's execution on set plays, nor is he one of their best defenders. He's not a seamless fit on this team, and this is evident when you look at OKC's best lineups this season. The most frequent lineup is their starting lineup, which features SGA, Giddy, J-Dub, Dort, and Chet. That lineup has been pretty solid, nearly posting a positive 6 net rating. For context, that net rating ranks in the 58th percentile according to Cleaning the Glass. However, the Thunder's best lineup has featured those same players, except Giddy is replaced by Isaiah Joe. Shea and Jalen Williams can take on the ball handling duties, and Isaiah Joe is shooting over 42% from 3 this year. When Joe plays with the starting group, there are no weak links on offense, and as a result they have a positive 37.7 net rating, which ranks in the 97th percentile. In contrast, OKC has also run a lineup with SGA, Giddy, Dort, Kaysen Wallace, and Chet for over 100 possessions. With that group, Giddy is the secondary ball handler next to Shea, but that lineup has a minus 8 net rating. While he wasn't moved at the trade deadline, I'm not sure Giddy fits into OKC's long-term plans. Shea and Jalen Williams are better perimeter players than Giddy, so you'd prefer to have the ball in their hands. I don't see Giddy becoming a threatening shooter, but even if he becomes a decent one, that wouldn't frighten defenses and they'll still dare him to be a scorer if he can't create his own shot off the dribble. Giddy will be a restricted free agent in the summer of 2025, and my guess is that a team will overpay for him. He'll only be 22 at that point, and I expect some front office to look at the stats he put up in year 2, combined with the fact that he's a former lottery pick, and give him a decently sized contract. In a reduced role, I could see Giddy being more effective for the Thunder, but say another team offers him 15 to 20 million dollars per season, that would be too expensive for the front office. SGA is currently on a big contract, and Jalen Williams and Chet Holmgren will need to be paid once their rookie deals are up. Things could change, but as of now, it would be hard for OKC to justify spending a decent amount of cap on Giddy when there are more important players they'll have to pay. If Giddy's fit with the team doesn't improve, I believe OKC will trade him next season so that they don't lose him for nothing. Whatever team he plays for going forward, he'll only be able to receive opportunities based on upside for so long. In each of his first three seasons, the Thunder have performed better with him off the floor. He doesn't have the requisite skills to be the lead guard of an efficient offense, he's not good in an off-ball role, and he's not too impressive on defense either. If Giddy doesn't make strides in any of these areas, it will become harder for teams to justify signing him. Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. With all of that being said, I'm out, and I'll see you in the next video.